Hi and welcome to this video where I was hoping I might have made a bit more progress but I believe the two cams are actually bolted to the underside of this cover which means it's not just a case of removing that cover. I think you've got to remove the sprocket as well or well, the sprocket comes up with the cover which means you've got to remove the timing belt. So in this video I remove the serpentine belt, the timing belt, as you do, and also the engine mount. which has got some impressive rubbery bit in the middle, bottom, like jelly. So. So if you need to remove your engine mount or remove your timing belt, not install it, just remove it, then this video might be for you. So, yeah, I don't think I can really add anything to that. So yeah, hopefully this video will help you remove your timing belt, engine mount or serpentine belt. And many thanks for watching. So start by removing the auxiliary drive belt. Now here's some photos of that and if you note I've actually got a broken tensioner hole there which is going to cause me a little bit of a problem later on. But anyway so for this we need a 15mm spanner and a 4mm rod or drill bit to hold this tensioner in position. So normally you'd pull it back like that and pop your pin in but that's not going to work on mine because it's already shattered. So I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here and try and sort of pull this back and take the belt off. And now my spanner is actually a bit stuck because of that broken hole there. So I'll probably have to pop my hand underneath and try and just pull that tensioner back a bit so I can actually get my spanner off it's just being held there by the tension. So the, the pin there is actually quite useful because it will make life a little bit easier. So if we can just take that tension off now, there we go, and relax, as they say. Alright then, so, and I'm also just going to show you here that the air conditioner pulley is normally freewheeling and it only connects actually to the pulley when the air conditioning system's switched on. Right then, so now removing the engine mount. So I'll start off with some photos here just to show the three main components of the engine mount because you've got the main part on the body, there's then a frame um, on the actual engine block itself and then like a bridge piece going across the two. So we start and actually taking the weight of the engine on a suitable jack or you could put one of those support beams across the top of the car there's not actually a lot of room on the mini for a support beam so I'm just going to break the earth wire off here using a 13 millimeter socket take that earth strap off I'm going to pop the nut back in there so I don't lose that And then we have need that 13mm socket again now for these three long screws that are going from like the bridge part to the part that's actually mounted on the side of the engine. So we get those out. You might need to just take the slack up there sometimes because the engine was actually just sort of straining there on those bolts. Let's get those three out. So they're quite long. I'll check these as they come out, make sure that they're all identical length. Something I do quite a bit. Just save some trouble later on in case one was. And then we've got a nut there. Now that's an 18 millimeter socket. You're probably better off actually loosening that before you undo those three screws as you just saw there that 
wasn't overly happy coming off that and twisted the engine. Right, so there's our like our bridge bracket there, made of an aluminium casting. So again, I'll pop the nut back on there. So that's quite an interesting mount that. I think there's sort of like a fluid in there. So it's for damping. Okay, so this one is a 16 millimeter socket there. Let's take this bolt out. Now I believe you actually have to replace that bolt um, with the new one. And then it's a 13 millimeter socket for the two bolts or screws either side. So get those out. That's the problem with a lot of these fastenings, they are actually stretch stretch bolts and technically should be replaced. So you might need to bear that in mind. So there's that mount. Now this is seems quite unusual to me because it's sort of got like a fluid inside that I believe acts as like a damper. So probably quite effective at minimising vibrations into the cabin of the car. I was quite fascinated by that. Right then, so now going on to the bracket on the engine, that's a 16mm socket for those four. Now you might have actually found it easier if you remove the top cover for the timing belt first. Um, because it does sort of hook under a little bit here. So it might need a little bit of a wiggle to get out. So again, I'm checking the length of those bolts. They all seem to be the same length. Here we go. And the final bolt. So the engine does wobble around quite a bit. Now we've got no support bracket on there holding it. We get that final one out now. Again, I'm checking everything to make sure it's all the same length. So there's the bracket, but it's actually sort of being held in a bit by the lower timing belt cover, but it has come out. So, and there is an engine hook on there. So for supporting the engine. All right then. So now to removing the timing belt top cover, and again here's some photos to show the cover. So the first thing to do is unclip the air conditioning pipe. I think that's one of the filler pipes. There's a little cap there on the top with probably like a Schroeder valve inside. So we just pop that off into one side and then we've got five screws there that we undo with a seven millimeter socket. So pop those out. I was actually hoping I didn't actually have to remove this timing belt to have done the tensioner on the two cams inside. Probably was a little bit hopeful there. Um, because this timing belt had actually been replaced in 2019, so I didn't really want to be messing around with it, but it is what it is. Okay, so that's the fifth screw out now and there's the top cover removed so we can now see the camshaft sprocket that's going to the inlet cam all right then so now i need to actually lock the flywheel which i probably should have done before removing the engine mount as i've now got to go under the car so i very temporarily refitted the engine mount just to hold that engine um, it's probably why it's a good idea to read the manual first. Um, save yourself doing jobs over and over again. Right then, so now we're back under the car now and we're going to lock the flywheel. So this is a 10mm socket and we just need to remove this little cover here and we should be able to see the teeth of the flywheel. Now there's a little dowel at the top that just needs to be pushed out with a screwdriver or something. Make sure none of that stuff falls in your eye. 
So that's the little cover. And there we can see the teeth of the flywheel. So I'm going to use one of these. Um, very cheap set. And the reason it's probably cheap is because you've got to modify it. But it was only about £10, so can't really complain on that. So we've got a couple of screws there. So the idea is this pops in like so and you put the two screws in and it holds the flywheel in position. The only problem was the top hole didn't align. So I even tried wiggling the crank to see if I could get some movement there but no joy. So onto the vise and a file and just give us a little bit more breathing space there to get that screw in. So we'll try again now, pop it back in. So the first one's in there, so it's a 10 millimeter socket again for these two screws. And there we go, so we've now locked the flywheel. Right then, so the next job is now removing the crankshaft pulley and this bolt should be replaced. So this is an 18 millimeter socket or on a breaker bar or a long spanner. Now I was surprised that actually came undone quite easily. I thought these were normally very, very tight. So I'm not quite sure why that seemed to come out so easy. But it has. And that bolt I believe should be replaced with a new one. So the pulley thankfully just comes off nice and easy. And there is like a keyway there on the back of the pulley. I'll just show you that now when I flip it over. You can see there's a slight sort of cut in there on the edge. Right then. So now on to removing the lower timing belt cover. So here's a bit of a heads up on what the whole timing belt cover looks like. So just so you know. And that's the back of it. Okay, so for this it's a 7mm socket. Now, the bottom screw there actually doesn't need to come out. So the, they should actually stay in the cover. So I'm actually removing this one and it actually doesn't need to come out. Um, not at this stage anyway, that's not part of the cover. That just holds the... it's like a protection... Um, piece of plastic for the timing belt but these um, screws do have little rubber o-rings on the back of them to actually keep them in position so they shouldn't actually come out all the way now it does get quite awkward there because you've got to try and get your hands up into there and it's quite awkward while trying to find Screw in there, yeah, there's another screw in there. Oh. More horsey noises. All right, but it's off now, so let's wiggle that around. I think the conduit's caught me on it because the piece of wiring is actually clipped to this cover. Okay, so that's the cover off now. And there's the back of the cover. Like so. So we can now see all the various pulleys on the side of the engine. So that's the piece of plastic I actually undid. Now we actually do need to remove that, but I'm going to pop the bolt back in there anyway. Right, so now aligning the crank and camshaft sprockets for the timing belt removal. So I'll start here showing some photos of the camshaft sprocket, the fuel pump sprocket, the tensioner pulley and the idler pulley there. And at the bottom we can see the water pump sprocket and the crankshaft sprocket. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is remove the flywheel locking bracket. Notice how my oil sump is nice and shiny now, even though it was leaking oil. I've welded it all up and repainted it, so hopefully that won't leak oil anymore. 
and then what I'm going to do is just pop the bolt back in so I can actually turn the engine by hand. So the crank locking pin is 4.8 millimeters in diameter. So I'll just show that. I've actually sort of pre-aligned all this just to show those pulleys all in the correct position. So that's what we would do. We'd pop our crankshaft locking pin in there. Now I'm going to add paint marks because I'm going to be reusing this belt and I am extremely paranoid about the timing. Now it shouldn't be out at all with the locking pins in but perhaps due to lack of experience and confidence I'm marking everything. So the diesel locking pin is also 4.8. Now this doesn't need to go in um, on removal um, but apparently it does need to go in when you actually refit the timing belt. But again I'm just going to show it correctly here to show that that pin does fit in to the pump. And again I'm going to mark that. Absolutely no need to mark that. Um, but it just sort of satisfies my paranoia that when I come to put this belt back on if all these yellow dots line up just makes me feel better and the camshaft pin is 7.86 millimeters and then that goes in like so and again I'm going to put a little bit of yellow paint on there so hopefully the yellow paint won't actually eat through the timing belt or weaken it now just as a side note the diesel fuel pump only needs to be aligned when refitting the belt, but I wanted to check how many crank revolutions it would take for it to be realigned again. Now Haynes say 12 cranked or 6 camshaft revolutions. So this is probably somewhat unnecessary, but I actually just want to check what Haynes have said about 12 revolutions of the crank should bring all three pulleys into correct alignment again so i'm just going to check this so we start here so 18 millimeter spanner on the crank and we start turning so for every one crank revolution the camshaft only turns half a revolution or 180 degrees okay so that's one crank revolution and as you can see the cam sprocket is exactly 180 degrees out to where the locking pin hole is. So now we finish this off by giving the crank two revolutions and the camshaft is back in alignment but the fuel pump isn't. So let's see how many it takes. So that's our third crank. So the fourth brings the cam back into alignment. Fifth one. Five. So the fuel pump's now nearly there. And six. six. So the fuel pump's actually aligned at six Seven. revolutions. I'm going to check that again now. Because it should be aligned at 12 revolutions as well then. And at 12 revolutions, yeah, the same as well. six all three sprockets are in alignment. So while we're at it, I'll also briefly show the relationship between the pistons and the timing belt. So for this, I'll just pop in these little brass tubes. Now that is cylinder one in normal engines, and I think it is on this engine as well. But if it was on a Peugeot, this would actually be the other way around, with cylinder one at the flywheel. But anyway, so we'll just show how the pistons go up and down in relation to the crank and the camshaft pulley. So you can see that when the locking pins are in, what they do is actually put the pistons halfway up the cylinders. So we're nearly there so once that locking pin comes in those four rods should be exactly level which they are 
so they are halfway up the cylinders right then so now to back to removing the timing belt so my worth just showing the tensioner and how it aligns with the alignment lug there on the left and that should be in the middle so just try and get a mirror down here and let's see where that lug or the alignment marker is on my engine so it's actually a little bit low there so presumably as the belt wears that lever will actually drop lower and lower but it's not central it is just slightly off I'll try from a different angle there you can just see it there it's got the hole in the middle of it all right then so let's remove that protection bracket again so I didn't need to actually really put that back in but so that's the protection bracket out and then we obviously need to disconnect the crankshaft sensor like so you just pull up on a little clip at the back there there's the little clip so it's one of those pull back ones and then I need to remove this crankshaft sensor I'm not sure why there's a posi drive screw in that I mean it might need to, it might be supposed to be there but it does look a bit suspicious so a 10 millimeter socket to remove the lower screw like so and I'm unsure why this seems to have a posi drive screw in it and a wall plug um, but ironically in the Haynes manual it almost looks like there is this wall plug sort of affair in there so perhaps it's supposed to be like that seems a bit odd though but anyway so that's that off now if we go to the tensioner now as I undo it if you then watch the index arm it should start to drop lower and lower I'll try and undo it sort of slowly so we can watch it here it goes it's starting to move there we are and then it drops down and then I'll just try and show you how it moves around there using the six millimeter hex key that you use to actually control the tension and you can see that index arm moving up and down with it now I'm also going to show it from a slightly different angle here there we are central too far back so it needs to be about there in the middle right then so we should better now remove the timing belt I've got to try and make sure I don't get any oil on that and have a look at it and just sort of check that it does look new I mean I suppose it must be new because if it had done 130,000 miles it probably wouldn't look like that um, but again this is where experience is quite useful because you'd know instantly how old that belt was by looking at it but for me it's a little bit harder so that's the numbers on the belt so got that for reference if I need to order another one I guess it does look quite quite new he says but yeah so here's a close-up photo of those numbers there so you can actually see which one is fitted to this engine okay then right now so a brief look at the engine mount and temporarily returning it to the engine so I can remove the jack so then let's have a closer look at this engine mount assembling all the fixtures and fittings so that's the single nut there that goes to the brackets on the side of the engine so you can see the hook there the eye for lifting the engine presumably out of the engine bay that black one and then this which seems to really fascinate me 
seems to have like some sort of fluid in, perhaps it's sort of hydraulic. It definitely feels like there's a fluid in that. Not sure if that could actually leak. And it looks like there's a little valve down there on the side. So perhaps they do fill it with like an oil or something. I have to try and look into that. So there, so that's basically how it is. Now, ironically, I'm going to have to just pop this back on the engine now um, because I want to remove my jack. I don't want that in the way for when I carry on now with removing the cam cover. So I'm just going to pop all this back on loosely. Not too loose, um, but not too tight either. So that it's ready for next week. And hopefully find out what's wrong with this actual engine next week. Okay then, so on to reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer. So uh, we started the video there by removing the engine mount. So here's our pictures of that and the fastenings. And there's the fastenings there on the part that goes on the body. Onto the upper timing belt cover. And then the full timing belt cover and the back of the cover. And then looking at the pulleys and labelled so we can see each one and then lower down we've got the crank we can also see the aircon pulley and the alternator pulley in that photo and then back to the alignment of the tensioner and showing that index arm there where it must align and the timing belt that's come off my particular car and lastly some more photos of the engine mount and the various screws and bolts that hold it all in place. All right then. So, thank you for watching and you've been watching removing the timing belt and engine mount on a 2009 Mini R56. And I hope this video helps you service and maintain your car within your budget. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in April 2022. And I can be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.